I'll introduce some concepts fundamental to international trade. International trade refers to the exchange of goods and services between nations in a way that is mutually beneficial for the nations involved in the trade. To understand what makes trade between nations mutually beneficial, we must first understand how a country can determine what it should specialize in and trade with the rest of the world for. To guide us in this lesson, we're going to look at two countries, the United States of America and South Korea, and the production of two goods, apples and smartphones. The production possibilities of the United States and South Korea are demonstrated in this production possibilities table. Notice that with a fixed amount of resources, the USA and South Korea can produce the following amounts of apples and smartphones. The USA can produce 39 apples or 13 smartphones. We know, based on the concept of production possibilities, that it is not within the realm of possibility for the U.S. to produce both 39 apples and 13 smartphones since the resources needed to produce these goods are scarce. Similarly, South Korea cannot produce 24 apples and 12 smartphones since scarcity limits its ability to produce these two goods. However, if all of their resources are allocated towards apples, then the U.S. could produce 39 and South Korea could produce 24. If all of the resources were allocated towards the production of smartphones, then the U.S. could produce 13 and South Korea could produce 12. We've also plotted the production possibilities of USA and South Korea in a production possibilities curve diagram on the right. As you can see, the purple line represents the production possibilities of the United States, and the green line represents the production possibilities of South Korea. The first concept we need to introduce in our unit on international trade is that of absolute advantage. An absolute advantage exists when a particular country can produce more of a good than another country using a certain amount of resources. In our example, it should be clear that the United States can produce more apples and more smartphones than South Korea. So we can therefore say that the United States has an absolute advantage in the production of both smartphones and apples. In other words, the US is more efficient than South Korea in the production of these two goods. The production possibilities curve, as we learned early on in this course, represents how much of two particular goods a country can produce if all of its resources are being used efficiently towards the production of those two goods. Clearly, we can see that the United States is more efficient in the production of both of these goods. Therefore, we can say that the United States has an absolute advantage in the production of both goods. But does this mean that the United States could not stand to benefit from specializing in one of the goods and trading with South Korea for the other? The answer is no, it does not. Trade, as we are going to see later in this lesson, should not necessarily be based on what a country has absolute advantages in the production of. Rather, it should be based on what countries have comparative advantages in the production of. So to understand what comparative advantage is, we first must define it. And then we'll determine which country has comparative advantages in apples and smartphones using the data in our table and on our graph. A comparative advantage exists when a country can produce a particular good at a lower opportunity cost than a potential trading partner or another country. Opportunity cost is a concept fundamental to economics. It refers to what is given up in order to have something. The opportunity cost of anything is the foregone alternatives that are not able to be achieved because a particular economic decision was made or resources were allocated towards the production of a particular good. To determine who has a comparative advantage in apples and who has a comparative advantage in smartphones, we must therefore calculate opportunity costs of these two goods in both countries. We're going to do that now. Using the data in our table and on our graph, we know that in the United States of America, if all resources are allocated towards Apple production, then 13 smartphones are being given up. In other words, 39 apples cost the United States 13 smartphones. So I can say the 39A for apples equals 13S for smartphones. To determine the opportunity cost of one apple, we must therefore find out how much 1A equals in terms of smartphones. This is a very simple calculation that anybody should be familiar with. Divide both sides by 39, and we can see that one Apple in the United States costs the US one-third of a smartphone. I'll express this in decimals as 
3, 3S. We have now calculated the opportunity cost of apples in terms of smartphones in the United States. For every one apple that the U.S. chooses to produce, it will be giving up one-third of a smartphone. Let's go ahead and calculate the opportunity cost of apples in South Korea. Then we'll know which country has a lower opportunity cost for apples. We can do a similar calculation for South Korea. We know that if South Korea allocates all of its resources towards apple production, it can produce 24 apples. However, to do so, it would be giving up 12 smartphones. Divide both sides by 24. And we can see that in South Korea, one apple comes along with the opportunity cost of 0.5 smartphones. For every one apple South Korea chooses to allocate its resources towards, it is essentially giving up half of a smartphone. Compare this to the lower smartphone cost of apples in the United States, and we can see pretty clearly that the United States has a comparative advantage in the production of apples due to the fact that its opportunity cost is lower. We can go ahead and do the same calculations to determine the opportunity cost for smartphones in the two countries. If the United States were to allocate all of its resources towards smartphone production, it could produce 13 smartphones. But to do so, it would be giving up 39 apples. So 13 smartphones come at the opportunity cost of 39 apples. This correlates with a per smartphone opportunity cost of 1s equals 3a. In other words, for every smartphone the U.S. produces, it will be giving up 3 apples. Let's go ahead and calculate the opportunity cost of smartphones in South Korea. South Korea can produce 12 smartphones or 24 apples. For every smartphone it produces, it is therefore giving up 2 apples. So the question is, where is the opportunity cost of smartphones lower? Clearly, South Korea has a lower opportunity cost for smartphones. So we can say now that the United States has a comparative advantage in Apple production, and South Korea has a comparative advantage in smartphones. Determining who has a comparative advantage in the production of a particular good requires some calculations. You must determine who has the lower opportunity cost in the production of each good in order to determine who has the comparative advantage. This cannot easily be seen necessarily by only looking at the production possibilities curves. When we look at the PPCs for the USA and South Korea, it looks like the United States is simply better at producing both smartphones and apples which in a certain regard it is, since if it allocated all of its resources towards either of these goods, it could outproduce South Korea. However, trade does not necessarily need to be based on who can produce more of a particular good. Rather, it should be based on who can produce a good at a lower opportunity cost. If the United States and South Korea were to specialize in the production of the good for which they have a lower opportunity cost, then both countries could potentially gain from trading with one another. In other words, the United States could allocate all of its resources towards apple production, which would put the United States down here on its production possibilities curve, and South Korea could allocate all of its resources towards smartphone production, which would put it up here on its production possibilities curve, and the two countries could trade with each other. In our next video, we're going to talk about how the gains from trade can be illustrated using production possibilities curves diagrams. We'll pick up from the same place we left off here, assuming that America and South Korea choose to produce at a point on their PPCs based on the goods for which they have the lower opportunity cost. In other words, if the two countries produce the goods for which they have a comparative advantage, we're going to see how they can actually gain from trading with one another and therefore increase the quality of life of people in both South Korea and the United States.